Why, hello, my friends. Yes! It is true. I have given in, and I am doing a bodybuilding show. Or I guess technically three bodybuilding shows. I mean, they're all with the same organization, but I'm doing bodybuilding, classic physique, and men's physique, because why not just go for it? Why not just do them all, right? And we are competing in Florida, even though I'm a Minnesota boy. Used to live in Florida for a bit. I, I worked out in the theme parks, actually. And I have some friends who are very much into fitness. Some of them compete, and they want me to do this specific show. So I'm like, let's do it. I believe it's June 5th and 6th, so we're about three weeks out. This is the current condition. The lighting's kind of bad, but perhaps you can see I'm, I'm you know, quite lean, doing well. Cut's been going very good. That doesn't mean I felt good the entire time. Whenever you're going into an energy deficit, you're gonna notice it regardless of who you are. It's, you know, your body is used to this amount of energy, assuming you're consistent, and reducing it on a consistent basis in service of losing weight, you're gonna feel it, you're gonna notice it. And I'm no exception to that. A lot of people assume that I'm just lucky and I lean out nicely and all that stuff. And it's like, no, I have an incredibly huge appetite. This takes a shit ton of discipline. Like, I want this. Part of that too is understanding you know, what kind of meal plan setup is going to be best for you. And, you know, as you cut down, like, how exactly do you want to be eating? What, what kinds of foods make you feel the best? What kind of foods make you feel the worst? And with that in mind, it's very, very, very key to include, do not, do not cut your fats super low. Just don't do it. Like, it makes sense to reduce your fats because fats have the most calories per gram and you're trying to stay satiated as you are cutting weight. But fats are gonna make, if you, if you reduce your fats too much, which it's gonna be kind of an individual thing, so play around with it, but you're gonna feel like shit. You're gonna feel even shittier than you will otherwise. I can pretty much guarantee you. But anyway, I digress on that point. Really, I just wanted to update people on how things are going because this is the fitness space. There's a lot of people with bodybuilding aspirations or those who are just interested in the bodybuilding lifestyle. So with that, I wanted to perhaps Dust off an old chestnut, or you could look at it that way, but this is not to incite controversy. Contro but this is not to incite controversy. This is just to give my true and honest thoughts on how I went into this, this prep and how I, went, how I went about trying to build my physique. So we're talking about main gaining again, yay! You know, doing this show was kind of a, I was, I was uh, on the fence about doing it because again, I, I really enjoyed my main gaining approach, or you know, you want to call it lean bulking, whatever you want to call it, I don't care. Just more or less, the point is you're not doing a lot of fluctuating. Uh, that was actually my one of my big hangups, though, with doing this show was the fact that I'd have to be bulking and cutting again, technically. So I like the idea of main gaining. I know it, it confused a lot of people, but from what I understood main gaining to be, you know, I'm not trying to get too into the weeds of the semantics here, but that was very much uh, a frustration when it came to the promotion of main gaining was the semantical debate. And for me, it's just you pick your own body fat percentage that you want to build muscle from and be honest with yourself in how comfortable you feel at that state and just try and stay consistent without major fluctuations. Like there might be some fluctuating because caloric needs are not gonna be the same on a day-to-day -day basis. But generally speaking, if you're consistent, your body's gonna look consistent and you're gonna perform, perform consistently. And as long as you're doing well with that, just keep it the same. And that's what I had been doing and I've loved it. I've done very well with it. But again, it's a relative thing. So it's kind of a hard thing to explain, but again, if you're doing a, a bodybuilding show, you are gonna have to bulk and cut because, because part of competing is being as lean as you can be to show off all your muscles. So that's where the cut comes into play. And then once you cut down, you're eventually gonna need to bulk up because that cut state is very likely not gonna be an optimal place for anybody to build muscle from. But even with all of that in mind, you know, being somebody who is now gonna have to be technically bulking and cutting, generally, I, I think being at more of a steady state, a, again, a balanced state is gonna be what's best for the, the majority. And even if you do plan to compete at some point, if you do plan to cut down to where you're gonna have to bulk back up, just bulk back up to whatever a healthy maintenance is for you. Now, that is technically bulking and cutting, but for me, when I'm not in competition mode, you know, let's say I, I, I plan to compete again, I'm just going to be at my healthy maintenance 
until that point. Again, if and when it happens. I think something that's helped me tremendously on this cut is the fact that I didn't bulk hard. I just, I, I maintained something that was relatively lean, but it was still enough for me to feel fantastic in the gym and just feel very good overall. And then the other thing that's very much worth mentioning as an update is, you know, as I've been doing this, this prep, I've been more open on my social media with my relatively small following. I've been, I've been more open about the fact that I only lift weights three times per week, which I mean, I say only lift weights again, it's, it's going to be relative, but most people who are into bodybuilding are probably going to be lifting weights four, five, six times per week kind of thing. But I have a very good reason not to do that. Now, if I could, I would be in the gym seven times a week, lifting weights two hours at a time. I love lift, lifting weights. You know, me doing three times in the gym is not because I'm trying to do less. That's not what it is at all. It's more to try to find what's most optimal. So back in the day, I, I did do some Kino body workouts, Grego Gallagher. And I have my issues with some of the things he promotes and even some of the things that he does for his programming. But there are also aspects that I like quite a bit. And one of them is he, he opened me up to the idea of training fewer times a week in the gym. He, you know, that, that that's a possibility. It's like I was out of the mind when I was younger that you had to be, you know, you have to have these very specific splits. And it's like, no, it's going to be an individual thing. You got to find what you're going to enjoy the most and what's going to ultimately, you know, what's going to show the most promise and progress with you as an individual. And something that made me want to do the three times per week is, so I have a Monday, Wednesday, Friday setup. So obviously that's a day of rest in between each lift, as well as, you know, the, the weekend to also rest. But I, I hate dealing with muscle overlap. That was always a big hang up of mine when doing my own programming. It's like, for example, where do I put deadlifts? Do I put them on my back day or my leg day? And you know, you could design it in such a way where you could do it on both, but it wasn't always that easy. And then of course, you know, when you train chest, when you train back, you use a lot of shoulders, you might use a lot of biceps, you might use a lot of triceps. I just didn't like all the overlap. So I figured let's do a total body approach with a focus. So for example, my Monday is total body with a chest and back focus. My Wednesday is total body with a leg focus. And my Friday is honestly, that's the least total body like, but it's still, it's still somewhat total body, but it, it's more bro -y. It's more shoulders and arms focused in general, but still, generally speaking, I am doing total body three times per week, getting plenty of recovery. And when I am in the gym, I train hard. I train extremely hard. You know, I go as close to failure as I can get, if not all the way to failure. And that's just what I do. I, I, try, I try to train with heavy weights, with very controlled tempos for a lot of reps, generally speaking. You know, I, I do a, a pretty fine split of intensity and volume. I don't know. This is just what's worked for me. I've enjoyed it. And maybe me explaining this to you, it will inspire you to give it a try. I, I do think that it's a very, very optimal approach to building muscle. You know, you can keep the muscles pretty fresh because, you know, you have that day of rest and you're not, you know, every day picking up dumbbells in the gym. I don't know, just some food for thought. And it's done, it's done well by me. I mean, you know, it's subjective, but I would say I have a pretty, pretty impressive physique and I perform quite well in the gym as well. Could I be more optimal? Maybe, but you know, how would we know? How would we know? I'm not changing my programming anytime soon. And I, I must just say, just as another testament to the, the main gaining approach, like I don't understand why people enjoy bulking and cutting, to be honest. I, I don't like experiencing the, you know, these dips. I like to be consistent, balanced. Like, I don't know, like this is no criticism to those that do bulk and cut. I just don't quite get it. I do not quite get it. Again, unless you are competing, that's the, the setting in which bulking and cutting is gonna be a necessity. But otherwise, if you're gonna bulk up, just pick a bulked up state where you feel good and maintain that. That's what I say. Again, more annoying semantics, but I digress. So yep, that was just a little update on how things are going with the bodybuilding prep. So yes, I like the video if you liked it. Leave me some comments in the comment section. I'd love to hear what you guys think about the words I just spat out at you. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. I assure you I'm worth subscribing to. Look, I got a cute doggy. Woof, woof. Goodbye, everybody.